Well, good evening, everybody. I hope you're all doing fantastically well tonight. If you could just let me know, can you see, can you hear, does everything look and sound and everything just looking perfect for a Wednesday evening? And then, obviously, we've got Imran in tonight as well. As always, he's become the stable guest on the live stream, which is awesome. It's nice to have a guest on that we can actually have a conversation and get you guys involved as well. So, Imran, how are you doing this evening? Are you okay? Yeah, I, I'm doing absolutely fine. A uh, really, really good week. Um, it's just started snowing outside, but other than that, things are going really, really nicely so far. And we and we sorted out three new clients as well this week, so jobs lined up. So that's that's always a nice feeling when you got jobs lined up. Always good. It is indeed. It's always nice to know that you you're going to pay next month's bills and maybe the month after as well. It's always nice when you get those <laughs> those confirmations coming in. Yeah. So. Tonight, we're going to be just talking about, well, you've probably seen the releases. Myself and Imran were kind of first on board releasing content about the new beta release of Elemental 3.12, always so catchily named. And normally, I'm not that bothered about the beta releases, but I felt this one was actually quite good. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do, as always, going to go through a couple of hellos, kind of say who's in the house tonight. And as always, if you've got any questions, any comments, anything you want to interject as we go through tonight's live stream, just make sure you do hashtag Q, just so I can easily find out which are questions and which are just general comments going back and forth. So first of all, to answer the comment about me wearing a hoodie. I didn't come into the studio until quite late to turn the heating on and it's bloody freezing you. That's why I've got a hoodie on at the moment and you'll probably see me doing this an awful lot. <laughs> well played, well played. So yeah. I'm doing this, it's not that I'm making money. I'm not sat here and I can hear my sort of PayPal account going ping, 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 ping. I'm just cold. So just bear with me. I'm sure by the time we finish tonight's live stream, it will be a little bit warmer. But at the moment, it's just over 15 degrees and it's nippy. So I'll just say that. So who do we have in the house tonight? Well, first of all, let's go right at the top. Michael Wright, good to see you in, and Pez Reloaded, good to see you. George, a pleasure, as always. We've got B Informatica, I have no idea what your real name is, but good evening to you. We've got Ashikur, good to see you in tonight. Tease is in tonight. We've got Bobby Palmer, we've got Bradbury Robinson, we've got Steve, Bob Wild. I'm trying to think, Bob, where in Canada I may be going next month. I can't off the top of my head think where it is. But as I remember it, I'll post it up and let you know which one I'm going to. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be going to Canada maybe next month or the month after for a couple of days because uh, my partner's just sort of in the company she works for. She's literally just got a new job just after Christmas to do with marketing and so on. And she's kind of working now with Italy and Canada and they want to have a face-to-face -face kind of thing to get, to get to know each other. So I might as well tag along because I pay for a flight and everything else is paid for. So <laughs> I might be going to Canada next month. If I do, don't worry, we might miss a live stream, but we'll definitely have content that week anyway. So Bob, as soon as I remember where I'm going, I will let you know. John, good to see you in this evening. We've got Linda Sue, good to see you in as well. We've got, who else we have? Timo, good to see you in. Martin, Faberon. I'm not even going to say that. Predict edit. Anyway, good evening from Ireland. How are you doing? Patrick, Daniel, Kalpesh, Matt, Crystal, Sasa. Good to see you all in this evening. Like I say, if you are new here and you're not used to the live streams, if you've got any questions you want to ask us, we go through, just do hashtag Q. Okay, so now we've done the pleasantries. Good evening to you all kind of thing. So, Imran. I know yeah. that for quite some time you've been after a mega menu when it comes to Elemental and now <laughs> all your prayers have been answered. So the question is, do you now feel satisfied that you no longer need to have anything else added to Elemental and your life is now complete? You know that's not true because I right. want the loop grid post filter really. Oh, and damn. even though I so always demanding. used to go on about it, I'm not actually that fussed about the mega menu. Now, I, that doesn't mean I don't like what Elemental have done. It's just that in my entire career, I've only ever built, used a mega menu twice. Okay, so that is something that lots of my clients didn't need and I didn't need to install either or I advise them you don't really need it. But I will say that what they've done is wonderfully easy to use. Um, I do want to test it out a bit, a step further though. I want to just, because at the moment, my indications are that the mega menu only activates from the top down. So it mm. kind of appears like that. And I want to see, is there any way to make, if you were to maybe put the mega menu on the side of your screen, can it come in like that as well? So I want to test it out and see what else you can do with it. But that being said, 
from what a lot of basic mega menus do, it works. It's it's um, I tested it out. I put it through its paces a bit. Really simple and easy to use. For those of you that are using Elements Kit plugins or even some of the CSS or JavaScript coding that I got from Elements.how, you could almost now say we don't need to do that. And I just think that it, it's it, it's smooth. It works and. Um, I'm not overly fussed by it, you know, because I don't really use it that much. But people that do, I think they're going to really, really like it. And about bloody time. So I'm going <laughs> to say well done, but about bloody time as well, you know. I think um, about bloody time kind yeah. of caters for a lot of things when it comes to Elemental. Yeah. But we're not going to bash tonight. We're going to be as positive no, as, no, no. as we possibly can be. I do agree well, with well, you. I well, mean, well, we'll do what... Go on. No, yeah, go so on. I was going to very quickly say is, um, before we go into it is that I think there's a reason why... Like it came out at 2 p.m. UK time and then I got my video out within an hour and a bit and yours come out. And I think that should say something to people. We weren't trying to get videos out quickly to say, oh, we got our videos out. It was literally because we saw what they did and we were like, whoa, people need to know about this. Not, you know, and we wouldn't have got our videos out as quick as we did if we weren't, you know, I don't want to say blown away, but a little bit like, oh, okay, this is this is Pleasantly a bit surprised. of a big one. Yeah, Pleasantly yeah, surprised. exactly. I think this this is this is something we need to sort of uh, sort of address as well, is because a lot of people say, you know, that I bash on Elemental, and you know, from time to time, so do you. But I think the reality of it is, you know, when they do something that is worthwhile, so then they, they sort of, the people have been asking for and they actually start to address those things, then I think it should also be noted that we are then positive about what they do. So when it comes to this, there was no negativity in the videos that either of us put out. It was quite nice, I watched your video yesterday and it's quite nice to see that you approach it in a very different way to me, which I think is always good because then it gives different mm -hmm. sides. The crazy thing is, I didn't even think about sticking a loop builder item in there, which you did, I was like, going, oh man, I did not think of doing that at the time. But you know, <laughs> I was I was probably just wanted to get the content put together and include the other things that were not just the, the loop, sorry, not just the mega menu side of things. So it was interesting to see how you approach it compared to me. But I will say it is a little bit finicky to start off with. But I think hmm. that just is because you've got to kind of like figure out which bit are you targeting to make changes. Like, for example, yeah. you know, when you actually click to open up the mega menu side of things, there's also a container kind of element behind it that might be going full yeah. width, whereas your menu is actually sitting inside that a small. Yeah. And then you've got to find out which bit do I target to make that transparent. And, and that was a bit fiddly. But... Hopefully, this will be something that they will streamline. But I think for the initial uh, implementation, it was relatively simple and straightforward. There was a couple of sort of like few moments at the beginning of like, that doesn't work the way I think it should, or this is probably just the way I was approaching it. But then once you kind of got past that, it was like, oh, okay, that actually makes sense. And it's like, that's relatively simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. So it is good to see that. Um, I tested it very quickly on mobile, so much the same as yourself. I want to go back and try it out, not so much from the sort of horizontal stroke vertical uh, implementation, but more a case of how can you work with a mobile? Because that's one of the things that people are going to ask, how does it work on yeah, mobile? absolutely. You know, yeah. Next is it, it could be accessibility, you know, those kinds of things, which is all totally solid questions. But mega menus generally are not particularly great when it comes to SEO and accessibility and things. So I think there's probably going to be certain limitations you're going to have with this, but it should operate better than the previous hack of using the pop-up builder to kind of create exactly. your mega menu side of things. So on that front, I think it's a solid thing. You know, obviously the first thing you get off some people is, oh, the one on breakdance is better. And that might well be true. You know, they, they are different tools. They are different points in their journey. You know, we've said the same thing before, that companies like Breakdance and Bricks and so on, they can respond quicker. They can put out what would be breaking changes because they have a smaller mm. user base. So that's yeah. totally, totally justifiable points of view and arguments when it comes to it. But the thing that's kind of still frustrating me at the moment, and I don't know if you feel the same, is that all of these new features, things like the nested sort of regions, the mega menu and various other different things, are all solely reliant upon the container element. And they still yeah. haven't brought the container element out of beta. So at what point yeah, are they going I mean, to do that? Because it's, this is the snowball effect. We need the one to release all the others. I, I have a very sneaky feeling that it's going to happen in version 4. 
And, I, and, and the thing that's making me feel that is some of the other stuff they did in the beta as well, like I'm sure we'll talk about our views, because now I've had an, a t over 24 hours to reflect on it. I have a different view now of the interface, and I feel like they're going to eventually push to version 4, where we have the interface, the containers, because it's now in release, you know, changing all of that. I think that's when it will all go live. So I, I am optimistic that version 4, which will come out on April the 1st, Fool's <laughs> Day, <laughs> will be when we get it. I'm optimistic that we're going to get it soon now. Because, like, it's, 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 it's been a crazy good period since they went, oh, yeah, here's the loop grid. Now here's the carousel. Oh, no, now it works with WooCommerce. And it feels like, oh, okay, we're getting there. And the post filter that we know was on the roadmap I now think we might get it by summertime. It's not going to be like a one-year, two-year wait. I, I'm, I'm op I am genuinely optimistic about it. And, and to go back to the point you made where some people might say, um, well, Breakdance has got this or Breakdance has got that, I tend to just say to people, look, if that's what you like to use, just go and use it then, mm. you know. Um, but um, I think Elementor has... Uh, they're on. I think they're on an upward trend with potentially pulling back people that were thinking of going elsewhere. Uh, and I've already had some some people on my live chat say, you know what, before they were feeling like going elsewhere, now they actually might stick around a little bit more because um, a lot of things that they felt they had to go and use extra plugins and stuff for. But like I said, the minute Elemental get that post filter enabled, that for me is going to be an amazing um, step in the right direction for Elemental, but we won't know until they do it. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's true. That that's the sort of like the million dollar question. And and George kind of makes a good point here. I think the containers seem more stable regardless of beta status. Yeah, they they do. But I think there's always that concern in the back of your mind because am I not mistaken that when they they released a, a, an update recently that they made quite a fundamental change to containers, which broke previous versions of containers or at least had problems with it. Am I right on thinking that? Because I don't uh, really follow Elemental yeah. as much these days. Yeah, so, so, so well, it actually stopped uh, forms. So if oh, yeah, you yeah. had, it was actually to do with loop grid. So if you had like a home page and you had put a loop grid in the middle of your page for your blog post and then further down you had a form, that form would not work. Mm. It had to be above the loop grid, which was weird. But that being said, I raised it on GitHub to them. And within 48 hours, they fixed it. So credit to them. They were made aware of the issue and they did sort it out. But um, but I am optimistic. I think very, I think sooner than later, you know, on the 14, 15 month anniversary of when Flexbox first came out, <laughs> we're going to get the final version. <laughs> well, the, the release version. We won't say the final version. No, hey, no, look, no like, the release version. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it is it is disappointing that it is taking this long and that there's so many things are being backed up because of it. And I will be do honest, think, I know. Do, yes, sir. No, sorry, no, I think so say, many people think, are. Go on, go, go, you, on. No, you go, go, go on. Go, 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 go. <laughs> so go. many people are sort of saying, like, I think it's going to happen in version four. And I'm, I think people are going to be disappointed. I, I honestly do. I mean, oh, I, I love, I hope that. to be proved wrong. Don't no, I hope that. to be proved wrong. But there's been so many times in the past where there's been promises of in the next this or the next release, you're going to see this or you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And this is coming from people inside Elemental, you know, mm. and the release comes out and what they've kind of, we'd say promised, but, you know, without promising, hasn't come to fruition. And then the next release comes out and there's still no sign of it. And then six months later, there's no sign of it. So I would, mm. I'm hoping, I hope that I'll be proved wrong. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be proved wrong. Because at the end of the day, as we talked about before, Elemental has been a solid product for the, a big chunk of its life. And for a lot of use mm. cases, it is, is, it is still an incredibly good tool. Yeah, but they just they have been historically slow at mm. a fixing problems that they introduce with updates, and b bringing in features that for a lot of users are important. And I think this is where you know there's been arguments again in the past where well maybe they don't want to bring the sort of the flexbox modeling because it's more confusing. So maybe the target market is the sort of the hobbyist, the sort of 
not the agencies, professionals, and so on that would tap into that. But then you've got the other side of it. Oh, it's a professional tool. It's like, well, you can't have your feet in both camps. You have to pick which yeah. camp do I want to be. And as you said in the past, why can't they actually have containers and the sort of sections and inner containers and so on? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So you kind of have the both because at the moment you can have the old version, you can convert it to the new version. So they can technically run side by side and you can have part sort of old sort of yeah. legacy way and the new container way. So they can technically run side by side. Yeah, I mean, I, I've done some testing and I have found that uh, if you do, if you activate Flexbox container and you then create a page before that where, where you've built it with section, just add in a section and a couple of columns, nothing else. Once you activate Flexbox container, you can copy that onto the same page. Mm. And you can keep duplicating it and add columns, remove columns. So you can have a page with a mixture if that's how you want to work it. Maybe you've got a website that's already got 20 pages of sections, but you now want the loop grid. You can activate it, drop it in, but you don't need to convert the entire page from section to container. It works absolutely fine. And I've done that on a couple of client websites where we wanted to do something a bit fancy, but we didn't want to go down the whole Ellie custom skin or anything like that. And also something that's been mentioned in here, and I did uh, two weeks ago is WP Grid Builder, which is a premium plugin, works really, really well with the Elemental Loop Grid. So if you want to add in some filtering system that works with the Loop Grid, it works really, really well. It is a premium plugin. That's the only thing about it. There is no free version, but it works out the box. You don't, you don't even have to do much on the settings. Just put in your taxonomies or categories or whatever, and it does it really well. I, I'm kind of like dubious whether I want to have filtering as part of the core product itself. You know, I think when it comes to, um, you know, WooCommerce, it makes absolute sense. But that's kind of already got parts of that kind of built into it a little bit anyway. So I would question whether there's enough need to have that side of things as an integrated part of it. But I kind of get where you're coming from with it. You know, there's a lot of use cases you build. You know, you like listing websites. I like dynamic websites. So for us, yeah. it would it would absolutely be good to have it. But I would question yeah. how many people are building sites that have that much information that need filtering that wouldn't then just say, I, well, you know, if you consider something like WP Grid Builder, it's not that expensive. No, I think it's I think for me, it's more a bit like um, WooCommerce. So one of the really annoying things about you know, hello and stuff like that is that is it's so limited in terms of what you can yeah. do. And if we can have something where now we don't have to go and get jet smart filters or anything like that, and there's nothing wrong with them. But if it now comes in built, um, you know, if you're after a basic shop kind of layout and whatever, it could be a nice little game changer, I think, especially if it means you're keeping everything in house. And if it's mm. one less plug in you have to worry about it's one less chance of conflict or incompatibility later on down the line. But on the on the, the flip side of it, that would mean they would have to pull people off the beta features of notes and things like that. You know, the key important things that are. You know. Oh, I think they've pulled. I think they've pulled that off a long time ago. <laughs> and I I reckon. In fact, I'll tell you now. <clears throat> in fact, I've just had an email come through to me right now on this bit of tissue. Okay, this it just says to me version four is coming out tomorrow, and all you're going to get is notes removed. For, you're not going to get anything else. You're just going to have notes. That's that's the big flagship headline. Notes is gone. That's it. <laughs> oh man, could you imagine? Could you imagine a world where that kind of thing could actually happen? No, me neither. So, Carl Pesh asks a question: um, the cross-site copy and paste is that just for styles, or yep. is that for sections as well? Yeah, actually, the actual co physical content. Yeah, sections. It, yeah, it, so, it's, so. it's entirely for. It's in, in fact just to let you know, you can. It, so what I did for one client is I created a blank page and I called it sections and I put a section, a couple of columns and an inner section. I told him, don't use the inner section, but it's there anyway. Uh, his other page that's got Flexbox container now activated everything. If he still wants to use section for whatever reason, he just copies that, pastes it and then deletes or adds or does whatever he wants. Delete the column, add the column, duplicate the section. And even when he duplicates on the container page, it duplicates as a section. It does not convert. 
Um, and I, because that's what a lot of people were worried about. Oh, the minute I hit activate, do I now need to manually go through? Um, and, you know, uh, in fact, I did a video on it about whew, four months ago. And to this day, it's it's absolutely fine. So unless Elemental completely eradicate sections, which they're not going to, they, they wouldn't dare do that. You're, you're OK. You're fine. Go for it. Just take a backup before you do it, but you're fine. <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> Always take a backup. I, funny enough, I released a video on that. Do this before you update Elementor. Yeah. It's, funny enough, it's been quite a successful video. Wonder why. <laughs> so let's have a little look. Now, Vegard is saying that looks like Grid is coming in version 3.13. Really? Are we talking Ooh. CSS Grid here, or are we talking something else? Because, I mean... I mean, Christ, they can't that's, even get the container out yet in Flexbox. That's, so that's interesting because that would be like, well, that that would probably be next month then. Mm, yeah, probably three point one two. Yeah, that's interesting. <clears throat> I would be surprised, but interesting if they did do it. Um, I would be. <laughs> while it while it sounds like a nice thing. I would just like them to get one thing finished first. You know, if the containers yeah. hold it, you know, not, yeah, if the container, which is the Flexbox model side of things, if that's holding back so much development and, and final releases from beta, surely it would make more sense to get that wrapped up before they look at CSS Grid. Yeah, I mean, I did say it on, I think, the live chat, I think we did about three or four weeks ago, I did say that I would rather have all of that loop stuff and the post filter all mm -hmm. done and dusted before you make the grid because there's lots of people even to this day who are going oh i still struggle to get my head around flexbox container you know i'm still not there S grid is a whole different ball game oh yeah yeah you Definitely. you know like and and you don't have to <coughs> use it but i would say just get get the final version out so people are more confident about using it and then slowly go with the grid and i would even probably say give a good two three month gap because there's always going to be bugs with the oh, filters yeah. and everything else you do. So I say fix them, get it solid. Because the last thing I want to do is you bring out grid and now, I don't know, it just starts to go havoc, you know. And then you, you know, and then you got to make sure that all these other third party plugins like Grid Builder and all of this as well, you have got yeah. to make sure they're, because um, because it does make you wonder about these third party plugins. We know they're a bit slow to get on mm. board with Flexbox Container. Now yeah. when you bring out Grid, and a lot of them aren't updating properly because they don't have the final version yet, they're just going to be playing catch-up all the time. Yeah. And that doesn't help us as a consumer, so yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, Vagard, he said a lot of Grid references in GitHub. Um, but yeah, interesting. If it is coming in 3.13, that is very interesting. Yeah, it would be an interesting thing to sort of see. Um, Matt, to answer your question before we sort of carry on, if you just have a look on my channel, there's actually two videos on there on, first of all, getting started with a container and the second one, the best way to use the Elemental container because container and sort of the Flexbox model isn't that complicated, but there are an awful lot of options that can cause confusion. And I think that's where people sort of fall down. It's like, when do you have rows? When do you have columns? When do you reverse? When, you know, all those kinds of settings and then, You've got additional settings inside the actual widget itself. So I can totally understand why it can be confusing. And especially if you sort of try to use it in the same way that you've been using sort of sections mm -hmm. and inner sections and those types of things where you don't need to. I know Imran has done videos as well on the right way to use it where you cut back on the content and use the Flexbox model itself to position things inside just one container. So once you kind yeah. of get to grips with the basics of it, it's not that complicated. But I would recommend checking out those videos that I've got on the channel and also checking out Imran's videos on it. Because again, while we approach it in a very similar fashion, we might have slightly different ways and give different information. And yeah. what we'll click with one video might not click with another. So it's always good to have different options there to you know, kind of get a good understanding of how this, what is a fundamental feature works. And I would say that once you've kind of got past that initial hurdle and you move on to maybe looking at alternative tools, like for example, you might want to go down the route of using, you know, something like Bricks Builder, or you want to go down using something like GeneratePress or tools like that. They all use the Flexbox model. 
And once you understand it, you'll find it so much easier to transition between them in exactly the same way that if you come from like using advanced custom fields, and then you would look at something like Jet Engine or any of those, the terminology and the basic concepts behind it are pretty much the same. So it means transitioning between excuse me, different platforms, different tools becomes a lot easier. So spend a little bit of time, Matt, learn the fundamentals of working with the container or Flexbox in general. And I think you'll find it'll pay dividends big time. Yeah, what I will say is the first time I used containers, it took me about two or three hours to get my head fully around all the settings. Mm -hmm. But I would say now, with the videos that we've got out, like Paul has said, you'll be fine. Because when we were going into it, there wasn't really that kind of videos really out there. No. Or it was very still early days. But now you've got the tools there. And, you know, uh, once you play with it, you know, a couple of hours in, watch the videos, you'll be fine. It, it, when it clicks, it clicks. Seriously, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. And, and you'll feel comfortable with it. Yeah. It's just, just taking that that time to start off with to invest in the learning and the understanding to get that foundational knowledge of, of how things work. So I would say, Matt, it's worth taking the time just to understand Flexbox itself. Uh, yeah. So international style, we've got a quick question. Now, there's a lot of questions on you, so... You know, we can't answer everything. We'll try and answer a little bit. So about ACF and Elementor, can you guys advise almost the best solution or plug in today to display ACF flexible and repeater fields? Uh, I, I'll give you one which I am kind of uh, linked to because I've created content for them, but I would say dynamic content for Elementor is probably going to be the main one because it is just yeah. so bloody powerful. So I would recommend checking that out. Um, that's just dynamic o o o. That's Have the look. one I was going to say. Yeah, it's, it's, that's exactly it's, what I was going to say because we um, we migrated someone's website over uh, and uh, they had loads of custom fields and the biggest issue was trying to get those to show and then in the end we just went with dynamic .oo and it was it was easy. Once you've activated it, you literally then just go oh there it is, boom boom boom, repeats and that was it. Yeah, you know, um, so yeah. Uh, and it is very powerful. It's not limited to just ACF. As you can see, it'll work with jet engine pods. It works with Elementor. It works with WooCommerce, et cetera, et cetera. So all those main players are going to be there. Don't take too much notice of the website because it's not necessarily yeah. the nicest looking website in the world, but take my word for it. And to be honest, the plugin isn't the nicest looking plugin in the world. It is it is overwhelming. But there's an abundance of videos on my channel um, I've done sponsored content. I've worked with Giovanni, who's the owner of the company. Genuinely nice person, listens to what people say and takes on board sort of feature requests and, and bugs and things like that. So I would say it is definitely one of those ones that if you work with dynamic content, that should be one of those tools in your toolbox because it has so many powerful features in it that you'll be amazed what you can do and how it expands upon what can be done with Elemental itself. So check it out. Have a look for yourself. I'll look at some of the videos to give you an idea if it's for you. Right. Yeah. So Matt, I watch a lot of both of your videos. You both have different ways of explaining things, and the way you both break stuff down is good. I mean, that's that's kind of what we try to do. You know, I think we are, we do have different approaches, but I think the nice thing is that if you look at one and you look at the other, we'll bring something different to the table. And I think mm. ultimately it complements everybody's learning because you have different approaches to effectively the same thing. Like I said about the video on the Mega Menu, we approached it in very different ways. So you can pick up different things mm. from each of the videos. And I think that's, that's the beauty of having so much content available to you free of charge that opens up so many sort of learning opportunities and just to get an idea of how these different things work. And then you can kind of run with the idea yourself and, and go off and create whatever you want. Flow free, child. You know the kind of thing I mean? Now, if you gain value from tonight's live stream, please do hit that thumbs up. It does tell YouTube that you like what we do around here and spreads the word to more and more people. So hit that thumbs up button. If you don't enjoy it, you can hit the thumbs button, thumbs down button twice because that works pretty well too. I haven't done that one for a while. Uh, let's have a little look. George, that's the thing. Uh, you love the company that listens to its users. I do. I absolutely love companies that listen to their yeah. users. You know, companies that take everything on board and try to do everything, that's a recipe for disaster. But when you've got constructive criticism or you've got constructive ideas and things to make the product better and you've got companies that listen to it, you know, we talked about Bricks many times in the past. We'll talk about Giovanni with Dynamic Content for Elementor. There's been lots of different companies that... I don't necessarily have any kind of commercial association with, 
but I've given feedback to them and other people have given feedback to them. They've taken it on board and they've run with it. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. I, I think that's the way that we all get better products where the community has a vested interest in it and the company listens to the, those people. So I think that's always a good thing, you know, with moderation. So, yeah. What do you think? Absolutely agree. I mean, um, you know my views. If I make some, if I point out something to a company and they get a bit irritated, I it puts me off them if they don't care to listen. And I think I've already really irritated three big companies in the last month or so, because I'm just honest with my views about what they're not doing right, and they just don't like it. But when a company yeah. takes on board that actually, I'm pointing out something that I feel is hurting your consumer base or your commercial aspect or just that, you know, you're you're avoiding fixing something because you don't care. I don't like it. But when, when people listen and they actually do something about it, I value them so much more. Um, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, for a lot of them, they would not survive without us. It sounds yeah. really dodgy and weird because I'm sure no, you, know, no. you go, yeah, but they've got investors and stakeholders, but... They would not be where they are without us. So it's it's lovely when they listen, you know. Um, yeah, it's great. Even if they don't take on board or they don't make those changes or those alterations that you make, as long as you kind of feel like your input is valued, and I'm not talking about just the you and me, I'm talking about just users, people yeah, that yeah. pay for these products and so on. I think that that's important to to have that out there, you know, that people do listen to you and mm -hmm. you kind of feel like their, their input is valued. Okay, so next up, we've talked about the Mega Menu, but that was only part of what was released in this sort of beta release, which you can download if you want to. You know, you can download this, you can install it. Obviously, don't do it on a live site, only do it on a test site, yeah. just in case things go a little bit. Oops. Oh, okay. For some reason, my, my iPad decided it doesn't want to show up anymore. Oh, there we go. It's back there now. It's back. I put an extra 50p in the meter. So one of the other things they brought out is the alternative templates for the loop. Now, this is one of those things that if you've ever used Jet Engine and you've got their sort of their, their loop builder kind of feature, then this has been in there for quite some time. So it's, it's a nice mm. thing. And I will say that testing it out was one of those things that it was really, really easy. Didn't have to read the instructions on it. You kind of think, you think okay, well, I'm gonna have to make another template. That's pretty simple and straightforward. Mm. And I do like this kind of thing because it does open up the ability to have different kinds of designs. Pulling in dynamic content into dynamic templates is also pretty cool. There's room for for growth on this. There's room for expanding mm -hmm. it. But this is the kind of the first release of it. So did you try this out yourself? If you did, what were your thoughts on it? Something you could see yourself using? Because, I mean, like I said, you do a lot of listing type sites. So could you yeah. see yourself sort of moving over from something like a dedicated listing tool to something like this when it's released to create your own kind of platform with it then? Well, that's the reason why I'm really looking forward to the post filter and then trying to make it work with a map as well. Then mm. I might decide I don't need to use like the my listing theme or whatever, but the alternate uh, templates is really easy to use. And for me, when they brought out the loop grid, a lot of people were like, oh, well, I don't need to use LE custom skin now, but I wish I could do a little bit more. This now, I think, answers their questions. And the fact that you can have like a diff so you could have like a post grid of, say, 10 and every two you have a different template or you have a template for post one, a template for post two, a template for post three. You can have totally different sizes and mm -hmm. anyone looking at your page might think you've gone and dropped in three individual post widgets to just show one post and then you've modified it that's what i kind of did in the old days if i wasn't yeah. going to use a third party plugin but now for me it was like ah this is good this is like really good and even in its early days you know I've, yeah, some bits i felt like okay maybe this could be tweaked a little bit but for the first cut or the first mm. release i don't know who behind the scenes is thinking this stuff up um because when i saw on the roadmap that they were going to do templates i thought it was literally just templates which they also yeah. released and i thought well that's not really that brilliant but the <laughs> alternating i think it allows you now i don't know to be very to be quite imaginative you know, and it's not difficult at all you know, when you do the loop grid template. It is yeah. so simple, easy. And anyone who's watched a video I did where 
when I built the loop grid, I shoved the call to action widget in, which meant you got all the Ken Burns, you got loads of stuff. Mm. And it now means that you could have you could have it looking like that, like that. You, it's, it's, it just makes you get, a, and again, this is why I get felt like, wow, they've knocked the ball out the park now for this one. Um, so yeah, I, I like it. I really like what they did. Well, the nice thing is you can create the template out of anything. So like you say, if you want yeah. to have, you know, if you want to use just a, a different kind of widget just for the one template, so you're creating an advert, for example. That's, that's the example I kind of used in, in my Jet yes. Engine one was that you had like a real estate listing, so you'd have all your properties, but then you had a big advert that says, do you want yeah. to list your property? Which then you yeah. can just choose where you drop that in and you can have dynamic content or static content, use whatever widgets you want. So it gives you some creative freedom to be able to get a little bit of flair into your listings, which could generally be quite boring. So I do appreciate how easy they actually made that. Now, going back to the templates that you mentioned, did you look at those? Because to me, there's like, I think it's about five or six templates. And I got to be honest, I think I there was, they were yeah, really I did, awesome, I, they, awful. They, they, to me, they were just bland. To me, they were just like so basic. I personally felt like I don't really feel there's a massive need for them. And I'm not trying to criticize who created them, but I just felt like they weren't imaginative at all. And in fact, out of all of them, there was only one that I thought was okay. And some of them, I really feel like, mm, I'm just not sure about these at all. There, there is a question someone's just asked, though, uh, Nadworks, which he says, can you use different templates for different categories? The answer is no, because technically everything sits within one query. So inside of it, you will have different templates. But the query for the loop grid is where you define your categories. So if you say it's going to be category one, two, and three, or whatever, it will apply that for all the templates. But then again, it's very easy to just put in different loop grids if you want and mix it, mix it up a little bit. Okay, cool. I haven't looked into that side of things too much. Like I say, I, I literally put the video together demonstrating it all. So good to sort of know how things are working. And again, I think this is one of those areas that we're going to have to go back and spend a little time when this moves into a more sort of stable state to find out right, yeah, what are the limitations yeah. of this, you know, and, and how yeah, can you absolutely. you take these different elements and things. So that it is good, though. Like I say, it is good to see them moving forward. I think the templates in general, I don't think are very good. You know, I've, I've looked mm. at quite a lot of them. I think it's very much like quickly. I didn't think the quickly mm. ones were very good either. And then you look at things like... Um, I mean, we can't say bricks because bricks basically has none. There's like three yeah. quite ropey ones in it. But you yes. do see some that have some, like like Divi, for example. I mean, they've got their marketplace and so on. And, you know, whether you like Divi or not, there's a lot more creativity in their templates that are included as part of your sort of Divi subscription kind of thing. So yeah. it would be nice if they got someone on board that was a little bit more design focused, that made something just a little bit more interesting. Or just expand upon the wireframe side of things to give people more wireframe options. Do you know what? I, I personally think that a lot of the templates that you do have, even with Elemental, like the blocks they have and stuff, mm. sometimes they have so much in there that if you do use one, you end up undoing and undoing and unsetting so much. And I really feel like that... I mean, I don't really use the wireframes because I like to be imaginative and do what I want to do, but... For those people that are, just do a wireframe. Just have a wireframe, you know, just make it really simple and easy and efficient to work on because because it's dead easy to look at a template and go, oh, I really don't like that. But actually, that was the template you needed. But what put you off was the image and the <laughs> colors they used. Yeah. Because, you, you know, because if it was a different color, you might have gone for it. But you psychologically, you went, oh, I don't like that. But actually, that was the one you needed in terms of the layout. So I say just go for gray scale wireframe. That always works. Yeah, I know what you mean. That is the distractions are taken away. And yeah. It's like, you know, don't get me wrong, there's, there's probably some modern creativity in these templates that have been recently, in these sort of mm. template kits and things like that. But I think it goes back to the same principle you had when you used to use Theme Forest. You'd get these templates, these themes, and you go, <laughs> and they're then, absolutely amazing. You'd buy it, and then you strip all the content, and you go like, that looks like arse. It's yes. because it only looked good yeah. because it was designed with that content to make it look good. And then when you take it out and put your content into it, 
it's never going to look the same unless you literally no. copy the exact layout and put the exact same amounts of text, the same style of images, and all those things in there. So, you know, it's kind of like, they're okay, but that's why I think wireframes are probably better because they take that visual thing out of it, which can, like you yeah. said, cause confusion and sort of like lead you down the wrong path and just give you something so you can quickly put together a basic skeleton of a website or skeleton of a page, and then yeah. you can go and flesh it out. You can choose what image is going there. You exactly. can adjust the aspect ratio and the positioning and those types of things. So that generally yeah. then would make a bit more sense. So I would it rather would. see them, you know, maybe even do something like when you actually look at one of the wireframes, you can click to get the preview of it, and then underneath it actually shows you, here's some examples of that exact same wireframe with content in yeah. it. So you can yeah, now absolutely. visually see, oh, actually that looks quite good. So I might take inspiration from that, use the wireframe, and adjust it to my way of thinking. I would love to see more of that, to be, to be honest, because like I say, I think the design side of things, I don't really think they're that interesting or that, that solid a starting point, so. Yeah. No, no, and and they're very subjective. You know, they're very subjective, and just because we don't like it doesn't mean others don't. Others probably do, but it, that's the trouble with it. It's um, I saw that. I mean, in the, I think in the video, I think I spent about. I think I made a note of it somewhere. I think I spent about fifteen seconds on it. That's how much I was like, oh, okay, yeah, here you go, blah blah blah. Move on. Let's go to another stuff now. Yeah, it it wasn't particularly nice. I I totally agree. It was it was pretty ugly, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so. There's one other thing I want to sort of talk about. Now, ACF has popped up a couple of times in the chat, and hmm. I'm an ACF user. I've followed ACF for quite a while and sort of used it in a lot of different projects, create a lot of content on it. There's one thing that ACF has always kind of lacked, and that's the ability to make your own sort of custom post types. So you'd have to rely hmm. upon something like CPT yes. UI. Well, yeah. there's a an alpha release of this that is kind of being promoted at the moment. I don't think you can actually get access. I think it's publicly available. But that is demoing the fact that they will now, in a future release, I think it's like 6.3 or something like that, 6.2, whatever, they will have a built-in ability to create your own custom post types. And I believe you'll also be able to take that element away once the post types have been created and you'll keep the post types in your actual setup. So it's good to see that they're Brilliant. going to be bringing that to the table because, it, it, again, as much as I like CPT UI, it's just nice to have one less plugin to do something that is fundamental to working with most sort of custom fields. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, though, the custom post type UI, which you have to use if you use ACF, you only use it to set up your post type in your category, your taxonomy, literally, that's it. And if and and if that was available in ACF, and I'm pretty sure ACF, they must have seen what pods were doing, where mm. pods basically meant you didn't have to have that second one. And it also allowed you to do more. Some stuff you had to get ACF Pro to do, like the gallery option. Yeah. So I would, you know, I'm pretty sure they've looked at that and gone, well, you know what, you know, what is it really going to hurt us to be able to bung that in as well? I hope they do. Um, but yeah, look, any 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 improvement that happens with any solution where you use less plugins and stuff is always always a great good thing. I totally agree. For some reason, my uh, my iPad does not want to show up anymore on the live stream. But there is uh, an ACF chat Friday, which was from Friday just gone, which is where they're talking about the custom post types and taxonomies. It's up on YouTube. So I think if you do an, a search for ACF chat Friday, you'll find the information about it. So you can find out. So I'm going to be checking that out once we've kind of finished the live stream. But Martin, to answer your question, a simple description of what its uses are, when to use them. It's not off topic at all. It's, it's, it's a good question. If you don't come from understanding what ACF is or when, what uses are, then it's a totally solid question. Basically, ACF, if, if you consider WordPress and you have posts and you have pages and each of those have things like titles, content and sort of descriptions and things like that, all of those are considered meta fields. And they're just basically pieces of information that make up your post, your page and so on. Well, what ACF allows you to do is add your own custom ones to the posts and the pages and WooCommerce and so on. Or if you use something like CPT UI, which allows you to create custom post types. So for example, it could be recipes or properties or cars or books or anything. Then you can add your own custom fields to that custom post type. So then you can expand what can be done with uh, WordPress itself. And you can basically push it to make it anything you want. So if you ever look at any of my videos on creating things like real estate websites, job listing websites, car sales websites, and so on, 
they all use either ACF or Jet Engine or one of the tools like that that all do basically the same thing, allow you to create meta fields and assign those to existing WordPress post types or combine them to create custom post types and associate those custom fields with those custom post types. Again, I hope that really makes sense. I mean, Imran, is there anything you want to add to that kind of description? No. <laughs> really, that's it, really. Okay. I mean, I mean, it, once you use it and you're able to add extra fields to posts and products, you'll start to see benefits of it. But if, but that's basically it. Once you feel a need to use it, you'll love it. If you don't need to use it, you don't need to worry about it. Exactly. But I think once you kind of you go into that world of, of playing around with dynamic content using tools like ACF or Toolset or Jet Engine, Pods or any of those, that's where you open up a world of possibilities mm -hmm. when it comes to WordPress. Prior to that, when you kind of have to use plugins to do everything. So, for example, like say, like with your listing websites where you use, is it my listing is the, the theme that you use? Yeah, the my listing theme. Yeah. So what you're kind of doing is you are, you are kind of having to slot into what that theme and that plugin and that feature set exactly. includes. When you yeah. want to go outside that, that isn't quite so easy. Whereas if you build it yourself, which sounds daunting, but once you kind of get into it, especially if you harness tools like Bricks Builder or Generate Press and Generate Blocks or Elementor or Breakdowns or any of those tools, you can access yeah. and create templates for these. So if you have a custom post type for, let's just say, property, then you can create a template for your properties that is styled and laid out the way you want and put in that dynamic data, create a custom post type on the back end of the website that's unique to that particular post type. And you can just get so creative with it with really no real limitations other than your imagination and finding the tools that combine together to make it a really solid, expandable platform. And again, going back to dynamic dots, uh, sorry, dynamic uh, Dynamic content for Dynamic Elementor, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, never, I never say it. Going back to that, that will take Elementor to not the next level, but the level above it. There's so yeah. many advanced features in that plugin for the price you pay for it. It's insanely powerful. So combine yeah. those things together. You could literally get away with ACF, create your custom post types, uh, Elementor Pro, and Dynamic Content for Elementor, and you would realistically have an insanely powerful platform to build almost any kind of website you could imagine using WordPress as the sort of the core for it. So yeah, Matt, you're right. Jet Engine has it all built in, but Jet Engine, and this is no disrespect to Jet Engine because I, re I really do like Jet Engine. It yeah. is still limited to the fact that it's built primarily to work with Elementor. It is opening up to start working with Bricks, but it's still not there yet. There's still a long way to go mm -hmm. there. And there is integration with Gutenberg, but you don't always want everything that something like Jet Engine brings to the table. ACF is fundamentally the de facto standard. Whether it's the best is debatable, but if you want plugin support, you want sort of product support like with Bricks and all those kinds of things, you want an abundance of tutorials, abundance of content out there, ACF probably has more than any other dynamic content sort of meta field platform at this point in time. I don't see that changing anytime soon. So that's probably the reason why a lot of people will go with a tool like ACF over something like Jet Engine, because it is just so well supported and so widely supported. Okay. Yeah, agree. You completely agree. Yeah. What have we got here? So let's take a little look at what we've got. A couple of comments on here. I've said this before, on you before, but I think whenever I need to teach somebody ACF, oh, sorry, I didn't mean this. <laughs> so thank you, George. That's good to know. Um, it's one of those things, I think, when you start looking into it, because I know I nagged you for a long time to get into working with, you know, ACF or whichever tool you kind of chose. And I think you were a little bit reticent to kind of get into it. Once you did, you started to go, actually, <laughs> there's so much you can kind of do with it. But yeah. if you do it commercially, then obviously you can probably put a website together so much quicker with the, my listing theme and plugins and all the things that go with that than having to build it from scratch. And the budget would probably be up there for the custom and lower for the my listing because you could put a site together so much quicker. Yeah. No, yeah. Do you know a man of many words there? No, I was just reading <laughs> a comment there. I was going to say, but um, there's one thing we've not touched on is uh, we What's mentioned that? it, and it was the interface that's obviously coming out. Now, when I did my video, 
At first, I said it took me a few seconds and I was getting used to it. Mm. Sleeping on it, I'm now torn between whether I actually like it or not. And I think the trouble is that because when you're working with Elemental, you still use the old interface Mm. and you only see the new one on the beta one. You're not fully brought into it. Having some of the things that were down here now pushed up to the top isn't bad. Hmm. My, the, but I tell you the one thing that is starting to grate on me is the publish button, which used to be down here in the bottom left. You didn't always notice it. You could be working and it wasn't until you looked that you would see it. You could almost ignore it was ever there, the green. Yeah. You almost blocked it out. That purple button in the top right is so blatant in your eye line, in your face. Because purple, bright, bold purple on black, it really jumps out. I don't have nothing against the purple colour. It's behind me, but it's like, hello, publish, hit me. It's it's a little bit like... Jarring. You know, yeah, I mean, you look at bricks. They just have a little grey icon for save and all that. You know, it's there, but it's not in your face. And I feel mm. like maybe they need to make it smaller with an icon or publish word and just... Take away the purple, maybe. That's my take. I just feel like... So it will take a bit of getting used to. It's not a bad idea to move all those little buttons to the top because, you know, it means that your mouse is near the top anyway. But just felt the button is like... It's a bit too bold for my liking. And it's massive. (laughs) It is. Oh, God, it is. I'm glad you said that. I was going to say something else, but, yeah, it's it's massive. (laughs) Don't don't, you know, I I, I haven't worked with it long enough to to sort of form an opinion. Like I said, yesterday, it was like, oh, actually, I can see why you would have done it. I can see why you put it there. But like you say, they could have just literally put a, a little save, a little disc icon in there. So, yeah, I, I don't dislike it. Like I said, the biggest thing for me is a complete usability faux pas is that there's no way to actually just go back to your dashboard. You can use the, yeah. whatever the last option is in the sort of the top left-hand button, but that just opens another tab. So then I've got to close the first tab down to get to the original tab that I wanted anyway. So it's like... Why? Why didn't you just have a, a back to the editor or whatever? Do you know what? There's something I've just realised I didn't test out is that obviously in the old version, when you have the update, you have the Chevron where you can go and see the display conditions for that template. Yes. I haven't checked yet where that is. I can't remember where that is now. Was that in the left-hand side? Or was it in the right-hand side with the publish? I'll have to double-check now. Hmm, From memory, question. I don't think it was on the publish button. No, it I wasn't. I don't think it... It wasn't because I'm pretty sure that was just a button. So again, that's I was used to the display condition Chevron always being there. So I think it's on the top left now where you click and you get that drop down. I think it's there, the display condition. No, I'm going to have to so log again, in. again, it's one of those... And have a look. One of those things that might have to just... Um, but, but, that, but like I said, the reason why I'm torn is because I saw it, I played with it, I did a video on it. And then you go back to using the old way. And until you are forced into, no, this is it. This is how it's going to look. This is the interface. You always feel a little bit like, oh, no, I prefer the old way. Because sometimes a lot of us don't like change. We just like the old way, how it works. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I'd be surprised if they don't get any other feedback from anyone else that, you know, you could drop the colour maybe. In fact, there is something I did notice this morning. One of my clients, um, brand new website, we installed Hello. Right. And before we even installed Elementor, so we put the Hello theme on, the favicon was a purple E. It was the Ooh. Elemental logo in a purple circle. So that now makes me think that when we do get version 4, I feel like version 4 is going to be a big groundbreaking thing. We're going to have a rebranding. I reckon Elemental are gearing up for something because that purple button is so bold. It's not the norm, is it, with their colour scheme, with no. what they currently go for? No. So I think they're going for like this full-blown rebrand. And I, I could be completely wrong here, but bricks are very yellow. They you are. associate yellow with bricks now. Breakdown's also a bit of yellowish as well. I don't know what Divi are. I think they used to be purple. I don't know what they are now. But I do wonder, are Elemental now going, you know what? We need to go with a strong, bold colour. 
so we yeah. can have purple t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> they, they 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 have been a little bit insipid um i've just had a look now that's sorry i, I sort of like had a different screen yeah no i was one yeah i saw you did yeah um and there is no way to do it on there i think what you're going to have to do is go back out of here into your theme builder so really? unless mm. you inside your theme builder then you're going to go to like your loop design for example and then oh, you're going to have to go <laughs> into no edit just takes you back into the editor i can't find I where the conditions a... are well i'll tell you what if my wife is still asleep and i can't watch tv tonight because she's asleep, so I can't catch up on TV. I'm going to have a look tonight <laughs> and just see template. Because it just it just suddenly pinged in my head, like because there comes a point where you can move things around and whatever, but if you then completely change the way we are hard coded or hardwired into doing stuff, mm. that feels to me like a step too far now. And if and if it's like what you've said, where you might have to go out, I'd be like, hmm. You know, the whole point of it was easy for you to very quickly change it and whatever. Mm. Yeah, so Michael says Divi is purple. I did wonder. I think it was, but yeah. Yeah, Divi was purple. Yeah, to be honest, looking at that, there's so many stupid things about this redesign. Like you say, there's there's no immediate way to be able to set any of the conditions on there. I can't see where you could even do mm. that. Like if you go back out to the, I mean, user preferences. Uh, oh, no. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where they are. And this is something like manage website. No, that can't be there. No, I, can. I have no idea. I can't actually find out in a very simple way where you can change the conditions for your template, which that alongside the fact that you can't actually exit out of the editor to go back to the just the normal page. I don't know who was in, involved in setting up this redesign but they obviously weren't a UI UX person because it might look pretty, yeah. but you literally, it's like building a car, not putting a lock on the car door so you can get in there and taking the steering wheel away. It's like, it's a car, well, but it's not bloody usable. Well, what I find funny is one of the biggest bugbears a lot of people used to have was that when they were designing, they didn't like the black bar along the top sometimes, like the admin bar or whatever. And they say, oh, how do we get rid of that sometimes? And now it's like, I have to say, I didn't have any problems with the old interface with things being in the bottom. Because like I said, you knew where they were, but they didn't, they weren't in your eye line. You could focus on your page and the top and whatever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like responsive mode. The minute you hit responsive mode, you got the grey bar at the top. If you didn't want that, you clicked it again and the grey bar was gone. Now it's permanently there at the top. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not completely against it, but it's going to take a bit of time to grow on me, I think. Um, uh, and it's not until we're forced to do it, but I hope they do take on board that that purple button is just too big, too bold, shrink it, grayscale it, just do something with it. Yeah. Um, Daniel, I'm trying to show my screen, but for some reason, I've, I've changed all the settings and everything on the software that I use. So the screen showing up isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do at the moment. The iPad should have allowed me to do it. For some reason, that's decided to play silly sods. Go and watch our videos, Daniel. Go and watch Paul's video and my video. You'll see it in there. That's what yeah. that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's some really strange choices. Um, Strange since they only recently introduced the option to choose what to exit to. You still have those choices in there. There's just no button to actually execute them, which <laughs> just yeah. seems really silly. So, um, yeah, you could be right, Matt. It looks like it's copying Webflow. I think they're copying a lot of things at the moment. I think they've looked around and there's a lot of other companies and a lot of other products out there that are just better uh, in lots of different ways. And I think maybe, you know, they're having to go back and take a little look at what they currently have and try to make it a little bit modern and fresh. Because let's be honest about it. I mean, one of the biggest things I think a lot of people got fed up with is the fact that the interface on the left-hand side where you got all your widgets wasn't properly resizable. Yes, you could drag it out, but it mm. wouldn't sort of like restack it. Like, like for example, people are using mm. ultra-wide screens. I mean, you're using a 48-inch ultra-wide screen. Well, for you, you could yeah. literally have three different browsers open side by side, but you might want to have, instead of having a widget list that's like 20 screens long, you just want to have yeah. the, the ability to open that up and have like five side by side instead of just two. So there's, there's lots of little things that, you know, it's good they, they look at doing those kinds of things, but 
get the fundamentals right first. And I think this is one of those problems that we kind of see time and time and time again, is there's these new sort of things they bring out, but there's lots of little things that are kind of like fundamental basics that are either missing or done wrong, yeah. or they just don't get included. And I, I just find it really strange that's, that that's the case. Really, really strange. Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, I like I said, I'm torn on it at the moment. Uh, and, and to be honest, it's one of those things where it's almost like there's no point going talking about it too much because it's the first time they've done it. I'm sure they'll get <laughs> feedback or reviews and it'll be interesting to see what we get when they release the final version next year. <laughs> I thought you said April the 1st it was coming out. Yeah. yeah, I didn't give you the email you know, <coughs> next year, maybe. But no, I, I do, I do, I do believe, I do think in about a month's time, there's going to be a massive big launch of like the new, um, the new, bigger, better, bolder Elemental. With the big know, purple button. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the purple button, yes. What they're going to do is they're going to make the entire top bar a big purple strip with just the word publish slapped in the middle yeah, of it. Oh, and no, it'll don't, be, don't, This don't, will be the oh. Imran mod. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I would have liked to have seen, though, is like a dark mode, which I don't think we have on there yet either. I'm pretty sure... No, hold on. Yeah, we do. No, yeah, we don't. We don't have a dark mode. Or is there? No. Oh, yeah, I need to do. have a look at it now. <clears throat> Mine's in a dark mode yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. Oh, what am I talking about? Yeah, sorry. Ignore me then. Ignore that. Ignore anyway. that. Anyway. <laughs> so, now, I know you did a video uh, yesterday on this uh, sort of survey that Kyle did over in the admin bar. Yeah. I did have a quick quick sort of scout through it. And if I'm mistaken, there, was, there wasn't that big a difference, was there, between Elemental and its next competitor, which was Gutenberg, if I believe correctly. No. Well... Well, Elemental was kind of on a slight downward trend compared to the previous survey. Gutenberg was on was going up. And I have to say, I wasn't surprised by that because the amount of third party add ons for Gutenberg in the last year and a bit has been very strong. Um, and Elemental going down a bit. Well, clearly that's going to be people going over to Bricks, Breakdance, or even Gutenberg and other solutions as well. So you can see the impact there. Interesting to see, though, what happens going forward. Um, um, I might reach out to Carl, though, and just say, I mean, you've said it's gone down, but how much has it gone down by? So I think it was 20-something, 25 26%. Hmm. What was it last year or the last time you did the survey? Um, but, yeah, it didn't surprise me completely. Um, um, that being said, though, I was surprised that Gutenberg was... 25 23 percent as well i wasn't expecting it to be that high if i'm really no. really honest no i know it was, what a you bit, mean. it was a bit like oh okay but then again remember this is a, a cohort of 667 yeah if a Web lot designers. of them are coming from yeah i mean if a lot of them are coming from people that are that are part of the admin bar you know his crowd because he's very much in the generate blocks you know and doing things with gutenberg it could be that a lot of his audience or a chunk of them like using Gutenberg. Maybe if you had a bigger cohort, like, I don't know, 10,000, it could be very different. So I think you got to bear that in mind. But that still being yeah. said, it was interesting to see, though. Um, you know, um, breakdance were nowhere in the top six. Eh, I don't know, you know, <laughs> whatever. But <laughs> it, is, it is new, though. I mean, in their defense, I mean, it is... It is new. It's still not quite new, yeah. Yeah. But I also think you've got to kind of take it into consideration. Like you say, the cohort is a very specific niche market. So we're not talking about general users. We're talking about people that are in the business of creating websites for clients. So they're agencies, freelancers, small businesses, and so on. So I think they're probably going to be very, very different to the general user or the overall use case. So it, I think when it comes to like Gutenberg, for example, I mean, if you say Elemental is, let's just say 27% and Gutenberg is 23%, but Gutenberg is probably including things like Cadence, Generate Blocks, mm -hmm. you know, all those different mm -hmm. kinds of tools. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison because you're lumping, potentially, I'm assuming, lumping everything that's Gutenberg based into Gutenberg versus 
Elemental, which is a single product. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's maybe yeah. why there's also, you know, those two kind of factors together probably are going to skew the numbers in certain respects. But I mean, the whole point of his survey was, I think, from web professionals, not average yeah. general everyday users that could be hobbyists Absolutely. through to agencies and so on. So to answer international styles, I hope you guys will produce more unique videos about the combination of ACF and loop carousel. This is a star and the other page builders are being left behind on the forums. They are very excited. Are they? Surely. Are they? I was going to say that. Uh, what I, I was going to say, yeah, um, please do let me know which forums you're talking about because I know I know there's videos we could put out. We could do stuff, but hmm. I'm not yeah. sure about the, that's That's like someone saying, hey, we really want a big pop publish button. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, but I would look if there's interest. Sure, we'll look into it. But um, I don't think there's that huge an appetite for it. I might be no, wrong. but I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, it's not difficult to create content. I don't think there's anything that difficult about creating those templates and putting dynamic content in those templates. I mean, there's still limitations on what you can do when it comes to any of the kind of query features as part of Elementor anyway, including like the loop builder and the sort of the loop carousel. So there's going to be limitations there. But I mean, if there's enough interest, yeah, I'm sure both of us would probably create content on it. Uh, Michael, well, Divi 5.0 just went into alpha, so maybe something's coming. What they're doing with Divi, if anybody doesn't know, they are literally going back and refactoring the entire plugin and theme. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going back and saying, right, we've gone literally gone as far as we realistically can, and I think yeah. we're hitting hurdles with performance and those things, and we can't retrospectively take that to the level where it needs to be to give you the performance that you expect in 2023 and moving forward. So I think they've set themselves a time scale. I think, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it like 2024? They're saying they're looking to release. So it's not something that's going to come out really soon. But I mean, they've taken a, quite a radical approach to say, look, these yeah. we do need to change something. And the only way we can do it is to completely go back to square one and build it from scratch using newer technologies to give us that speed and optimization options that, that the people are looking for. Yeah, I mean, it is... <sighs> It feels like a bit of a risk because it means then what about your existing user base? Does that mean their current divvies will just stop? You know, they can't use whatever it is. And I do wonder if maybe they should have just gone with letting their user base know, letting everyone know that, look, you know, uh, we did what we can with Divi, but we've got to now produce a completely new tool to make that distinction. Um, because I bet there's going to be loads of people out there who use Divi, they're not, they're not, they don't keep up to date with what's happening, and then a new version comes out, and then they're going to go and update or do something ridiculous, you know, mm. upload the theme. They don't, they've never done a backup, they don't have staging sites, and then ugh, everything just goes completely wrong. Um, and I just wonder if maybe, you know, they want to, they should have gone with the trouble is, though, the Divi name is so well known. Hmm. Um, you know, it's their whole brand and everything. But I do wonder, like, you know, um, yeah, it's like Artifa said that they could have done a breakdance move where you have, you got your oxygen, you got your breakdance. They could have done that, um, you know. Um, but if they gave enough notice, because they have in a way, they announced yeah, this yeah. eight quite a while ago. Yeah. There's more than, whereas with the oxygen and breakdance, it, it felt a little bit very knee-jerk. You know, there was there was hints it was going something was going to happen, but then it felt like a knee jerk the way it was done. So, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I mean, I don't really use Divi. I know some people do. I know George uses it a lot, but um, so I'm not overly invested. Um, no. Um, unless they do something really <laughs> radical that makes you go, "Wow, this take notice of this." But um, so I'm not overly bothered. But I am. Just, I hope they don't do anything that hurts their user base. Yeah, they're going to have to have some kind of conversion options to be able to take what's currently being used yeah. to move it to something new. So, yeah. But who thought that we would end a live stream talking about Divi? That is something we couldn't have envisaged an hour or so ago. Linda, that kind, stop that's, it. That kind, of <clears throat> says, that kind of says that we've kind of just run out of things to talk about. And on that note, we'll end tonight's live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Simon, that's good to hear. It'd also be back really compatible and non-disruptive to Divi users. Let's hope it's not a Microsoft okay. situation where they literally uh, make we, bloated uh, software. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 
<laughs> we will leave it there. We will leave it there. Okay, so we're going to wrap up tonight's live stream at this point. If you've enjoyed the stream, you've enjoyed the conversation and everything else we've done tonight, be sure to hit that thumbs up. It does tell the algorithm that it actually likes what we do around here. So Imran, if anybody wants to find out a little bit more about you, how can they find out about you online? Where can they find out more information, your content and all those kinds of good things? Well, uh, just go do a search for Web Squadron on YouTube. You'll find me on there, our channel, our contact details, Facebook group. Everything's on there. We do do live chats. We also build websites. We don't just do videos. But yeah, just go do a search for Web Squadron. You'll find me. And it's entirely up to you if you click and come along and have a chat with us. Otherwise, just keep watching the videos and keep liking and subscribing. Absolutely. I'll see you soon. <laughs> exactly. And if you haven't, oh, look, someone's given us a thumbs down. That's obviously talking about Divi. Anyway, no way. So, literally on the back of me talking. <laughs> it, unfortunately, it was you got the thumbs down. So anyway, thank you, everybody, yeah. for joining in this evening. I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. Like I said, we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place. All those kind of things. Oh, look at him. He's just pulled up a little nice little sidebar. Oh, he's I showing to, off to it. I tried to activate that when I was talking and it wouldn't work. And I was like, what have I done? And I, I, I realized I hit the wrong button. I hit escape. Oh. That's why. Technical issues, technical issues. So we'll see you I again know. in a week's time. Have a fantastic week. Enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy your weekend, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Stay safe, look after yourself, and we will see you again, same time next week. Take care. Take care. Bye.